that the Museum. What did you get off the bus? We're at the National Comedy Center in Jamestown, New York. I came here and did uh, the festival in 2011. So this was a while ago, and uh, I, this was this when did this get built? Not it wasn't even 2018. So, uh, but yes, I, I I heard about this. I was excited, and we're finally close enough. So here we are. So <clears throat> we are creating our comedy profile, which is our preferences, the people that we like the most in comedy, to I guess design an experience that's custom built for us, depending on who we think is funny. Um, don't want to be wrong, which is not how you're supposed to look at this. It's like just my opinion, but I don't want it to come back and be like, you're not allowed in here because you have terrible taste in comedy. Big Seinfeld guy. It's a lot of people, but Seinfeld is my original. Uh, oh, you select other people. I'd select no other people. parts of his archives that we're preserving. These are the uh, file cards from the Tonight Show office. So you can see how many times, you can see the dates that everybody was on. Like here's Joan Rivers. Oh, Every wow. single time she was on the oh, show. Oh, wow. Mini Pearl, Richard Pryor's card is here, Robin Williams. So these are what, their time cards, you said? Yeah, this was like, what the office kept as far as their dates that they ever appeared oh, on the show in 30 years of the Tonight Show. Oh wow, that is so cool. There's Jerry's. And you're, okay, so they're... Welcome to the National Comedy Center stand up right. Tap in at the table to join. All right. The show will begin soon. <laughs> Turn the prop to see the use, turn the other way, to see the use of wow, it throughout wow. comic history. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. No, this is, yeah. So this is Abbott and Costello from 53. Yeah. Okay, so this is comedy karaoke, which is just like what it sounds like. And here is where visitors often learn that it's really about the delivery as much as the writing. We're giving you, we're serving up for you one to three minute bits, some of the strongest stand-up material of all time on a teleprompter and people bomb because they realize that they have to get down the timing of every syllable. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, I thought I could get her. Uh, all right. Introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Ellen DeGeneres. Uh, I got, do I just keep going? Oh, oh, you just say that. I got some goldfish. I bought some fish because they say that is what, that is if you watch fish, it helps you to relax, to fall asleep, which explains why I'm always doze off from snorkeling. <laughs> you have to do things to re relieve that stress, that tension. I get so stressed out mainly because of people. They are so stupid. You know, it's just none of us, of course. It's the others, all the others. You ever do this? You walk up to an elevator, someone's there, they've already pushed a button, the button is lit. You walk up, obviously they didn't push it correctly. I'll have to push it myself. Now the elevator will come. Don't you hate this when someone says they're gonna call you? Say, say, that, say they say they're gonna call you about seven o'clock. So it's seven o'clock, they haven't called you. You go, okay, I'll fix a drink, you know, so you have a drink, then you have another one, then you have another, then another, and then another. Now you're drunk. Now it's five after seven, they still haven't called, <laughs> you know? Hi, I'm uh, Brian Regan. Oh. I'm sure you've been at airports with the moving sidewalks, right, you know, the whole stand right, walk left concept. Well, for some people, unlearnable. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't get, I don't, I can't do it. It's yeah. too hard. Up next, we got Nate performing Jerry Seinfeld's Halloween. <laughs> All right, hey, Nate. I mean, people probably gotta be just super uncomfortable doing this. Like, that's uh, why the bar is here. Yeah. You oh, somehow found fun. a way to, to make something more awkward than music here. Hello, <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, you get it, as it gets going. So, 
It's all about timing. So the first time you hear the concept of Halloween when you're a kid, your brain can't even process this information. You're like, what did you say? So what did you say about giving out candy? Who's giving out candy? Everyone that we know is just <laughs> giving out candy? Are you kidding me? What is this happening? Where? Why? Take me with you. I've got to be a part of this. I'll do anything that they want. I can wear that. I can, oh, I messed up. I'll do anything that they want. I can wear that. I'll wear anything I have to wear. I'll do anything I have to do to get the candy from those fools. <laughs> now we're doing yeah. Michael. Uh, Dude, me and Michael started Dangerous comedy girl. together, uh, but he has into comedy in uh, about 20 years. Oh, it's the bouncing ball, basically. This is the what? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. And just like he started, he's doing a fart joke. All right. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, George Carlin. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Where would a comedy? Oh. Where would a comedy show be without a few fart jokes? Do you ever have a fart on a bus or on an airplane or in some public place, but you, you hadn't been farting all that day? <laughs> so you didn't really know the nature of the beast. <laughs> you only knew there was lots of it. So in a situation like that, what do you have to do? What you have to do is, is to release a test fart. <laughs> uh, these are Dangerfield's joke notes. I just have to point those out. They're one of my favorite artifacts. So this was his little uh, monogram Whoa. duffel bag he'd carry with him on the road. And I love that uh, every you know inch of the papers are basically filled with his handwritten notes, in including what a crowd, crowd, parenthesis, two times. Yeah. The fact that he oh, wrote wow. that down yeah. tells you so much that most people would never assume is going yeah. on with a guy like Rodney. And the amount of different, I mean, look at how many different types of writing utensils are on this one piece of paper, and that would be his little duffel bag circle. I'll show you how this works. So this is just asking you what height is comfortable for you. Oh, okay. Is that for you? Yeah. Okay, your entry point is Chris Rock, and now this is like six degrees of Kevin Bacon on steroids yeah. and comedy. So the padlocks give you a chance to guess. Some yeah. people like to say, oh, I know the connection between these two. So you unlock the connection. If it's a light bulb, yeah. it's a connection of influence where one side or the other is a significant influence on their career. Thinking about that though, I'd like to die like my father died. Uh, so this is meant to highlight moguls in the art form who've had their hands in a lot of different projects behind the scenes that you might not realize. So we did it in the form of trivia. So this is gonna give you hints. Get smart, okay. So this is a person you're trying to guess. Directed and wrote farcical parodies of genre films. We start with the less obvious. Yeah. Okay, Spaceballs directed and co-wrote yeah. this Star Wars parody. Yeah. Okay, I heard it out yeah. there. So you could guess any time, but I'll take you through yeah. the other hands just to show you how this works. And you can see somebody starting to come into focus oh, all yeah. <laughs> This place is unreal. And then, but this, you can open up the archival scripts. So this is Groundhog Day, where you can see yeah. Harold Ramis's handwritten notes in the margins as the director. And it shows, kind of like karaoke, it'll show what was cut. We highlight all the changes that happened while it was being shot. And so you can see Harold Ramis saying, lose the setup of the car crashing, or he's saying, like, this scene is falling flat, it's not very funny, as they're actually shooting it. These are the original production papers of the first episode of Saturday Night Live, uh, including, you can see, the host was George Carlin, who, as you know, was in no sketches, because there was no precedent for that. He was a stand-up. So he was like, I am not doing sketch comedy with these people on episode one. Uh, well, this is where people are understanding the difference between improv and sketch and the rest of comedy. Going back to Del Close, the improv guru, uh, and how how most comedy that we know comes from the Groundlings or Second City or the Compass Players originally in Chicago uh, or UCB. Uh, and of course, Dan Aykroyd, when I met with him and Kelly Carlin to talk about the building of the museum, he said, I know what I could give you with a motorcycle that I drove to 30 Rock for my first day of work. And then he would take wow. everybody to the after parties on it. It spent years in Belushi's apartment in New York. So oh, wow. then he rode it up to the entrance of the grand opening and did this interview in the bar across the street. <laughs> it was this beautifully 
Oh, uh, look at this. Yeah, oh, wow. Oh, man. Oh, nice. <laughs> they got the chicken farm. Oh, my God. Yeah. How crazy is it? Uh, this is crazy. Yeah. This is nuts. I used to do it, yeah. Did you just get, you just got this? Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome. Wow. Is that it? Is that? Oh, yeah. That's the wall? So. That's crazy. Wow. Dude, you know how many times I know. Stood I, know. I mean, so many times. Could, like, I used to get a, get a I used to do that all the time. I used yeah. to put my hand on this thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's so crazy. crazy. Yep. Man. You said, and you used to, to get to stage, you had to walk past like this guy, yeah. like right yeah. here. Yeah. Like, You're like, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If it was packed. Yeah, yeah Gary, was, Gary's heard about all that. Yeah. <laughs> if it was packed, you had to go like that guy, you'd be like, you'd almost have to start early. If yeah, it was crowded, because you because the walk because it was a long walk, yeah, yeah, and you got to squeeze through people. Mm -hmm. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, it was the time getting the letter. That's nuts. I love this. Do your uh, you take a bullet for your wife Jones. Yeah, yeah. So I did it. This club, I mean, all, all the clubs mean was, so much, but insane. this private yeah. club means the most. This yeah. because we were just so there so, so much. And early yeah. on, it was a early first on. We were like, like we could all go down there. We could all hang out. Like this club for New Year's. New Year's. Yeah, I did New Year's. Yeah. Yeah. New Year's, the best New Year's. You go, yeah. uh, get a, uh, you go down there and do a show for two minutes, or not even a minute before the ball drop. Yeah. yeah. You, you would just walk there. out and you get to watch the ball drop, then you'd go back down. Yeah. This is where I, uh, like Red Bull. Just Red Bull. <laughs> I won uh, <laughs> March Madden. I beat Nate in, in a tournament. Oh, yeah. I would watch at, at <laughs> Caroline's, yeah. I won March Madden. He still won. Still I won it too. You won it too? Yeah. yeah. Mike? Second place. Uh, I lost to Mike Kaplan. You win, uh, you win March Madness. I mean, every, like every, like I, I think I spent the most time. Well, yeah, I feel like I spent the most time at Caroline's. Yeah, yeah. That's like Caroline's that's was because it was like you would go do spots and everywhere else, but you would just you just meet everybody at Caroline's yeah. mm -hmm. late night prom show. Yeah, the staff was great. The staff, we were just yeah. there a lot. But then they shuffle out the, that crew and then they move in a new crew. Yeah. They, it's like that's they just kept moving too many people. They should have just kept. They had such a solid base. Yeah, It'd still be open. It would be, it would be, it would be a. Right here. But these doors, yeah, these are the doors crazy. that were right behind the stage. Yeah, yeah these That's are the doors. Oh, yeah. Those are the bar fly yeah. stools. These are the tables. Wait, where was that bar? So that's the only piece we recreated to make the bar fly stools make sense. Yeah. So I didn't realize. Oh, okay. These are the bar fly stools. They're hoping nobody noticed that, Julian. That's how you know we're not kidding. Excuse me, where's that TV from? There you go. Well, sir, the, the TV just up there. He goes. No further questions from you. No more curtains are real. Curtains. Oh yeah. Well, I didn't realize. I'm not gonna touch those. They took the color scheme. I, I have a picture from like 2008 probably of me on stage here and my mom who passed away she said that was always her favorite picture of me from doing stand up was and it was from this it was from over there and it's uh it's just so yeah, crazy. This this club was like the big deal because I mean Burr, we go watch Burr when he wasn't selling yeah. like, sell tickets at all, and then the next year they would like people at Caroline's like you can't go inside. Yeah, yeah. It's too yeah. crowded. And you're like just let us go in. And they're like no. Oh, hey, this is my first. Remember they used to make the menus with your face on it. This was the first club where I got like my face and like a headline. You know, yeah, I think I thing. have a menu. Me too. I, mean, I still yeah, have mine. Yeah, I still have the, yeah. the Caroline's. Yeah. Mike's this on it in the lobby. Yeah. Mike's on. Mine. Near well, these bar stools, they were in the lobby, right? Yeah. yeah. There was uh, when Caroline's would do a, the, what was the headlining thing? Uh, uh, breakout artist. Breakout oh, yeah. artist. Breakout artist. So they let comics like do a breakout artist, so you get a headlining night. But this, this is no one knows any of us. Yeah. And uh, so I was down in the bar, and so they had a thing where there had to be 20 people for there to be a show. <laughs> and so I'm down there with the crowd. No one knows me. Is like 14 people, and they tell me and the audience the show's At canceled the together. <laughs> <laughs> they go, and you're looking around like, who I'm is this guy? That's, yeah. that's, that's just sad. There, I go, oh, shows up. And he goes, nah, whatever. And I walked out with the crowd. <laughs> And no one, and no one was like, "Sorry, man." Like they were just like, "Yeah, this guy, golly, all right." They're like, "We showed up." They go, "This guy must stink." Okay, yeah. he must. The, these are usually rotating exhibit spaces. So this is one we did for Ernie Kovacs Centennial, and this is one of those things like Mulaney loves uh, Kovacs, like mm -hmm. Gilbert Gottfried. This was his favorite part of the whole museum. You just don't know what. Uh, you know, speaks to people in terms of their original influences. 
smoking underwater, so you can guess maybe how he did that. I was doing head in his mouth the whole time. Whoa! When I was 19 years old, to see what clubs are like in different cities. Uh, last August, I stood in line yeah. outside of Carolina. Out waiting all night, spent the night 24 hours. I mean, we were just out there from 8 p.m. or 10 p.m. to the next. What do you morning. mean, waiting online to audition? Audition for last comic standing. To get told no by last comic standing. This is this is all about the relationship between comedians and social media. Uh, so, for example, that you know, once there was Twitter, you didn't have to wait till your next gig that might be days or weeks away to make a quip or a punchline on something that just came to you. I'm asking you, who's on first? Well, go ahead and tell me. The guy on first. It, what does so it mean go like? ahead and tap in with your wristband, yeah. and I'll explain so you don't have to read all the instructions. It's on the blue. Hit next. So yeah, just hit the green buttons to go next through. This is a competitive experience that uses AI to analyze your face and whether... Let's see, can you... Does your stool go a little? You got it, okay. So stay in that frame. Okay. It's like a joke you want to tell. Brown will begin after you and your opponent's leg jokes. So you're choosing a joke to attack with, and your goal is to make him smile or laugh, and if you do, you get a point. And if you don't smile or laugh, then it's blocked. <laughs> and you choose a joke to arm yourself with. Okay, so you're listening. I'm listening? Yeah. So keep your face in that little uh, area. Want to know why it's so hard for women to find men that are sensitive, caring, and good looking. Because those men already have boyfriends. <laughs> it is something. Blocked. <laughs> Tough D. You can choose between either of these jokes to hit him with, so whichever one you like more. Okay. Wait, so is this the right? Yeah, that's the setup. Oh, okay, got it. The, the punchline. Uh, I chose it for you by accident. We've tried <laughs> to carry out of the Being comedy wise is so simple. <laughs> Just think of something stupid to say and then don't say it. Oh, right? The defense being played. <laughs> Come on. Right, that's that's it. Oh. <laughs> that was, uh, that sounded like one of your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Uh, so my friend, he accused me of being immature, and I was like, you know what? I go, why don't you get out of my fort? <laughs> <laughs> so, That's a smile. That's a smile. Oh, 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 my wife told me to stop acting like a flamingo, so I had to put my foot down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he plays really hard defense. <laughs> That's kind of my shtick. Yeah. <laughs> really this is how we oh, wait, respond so wait, to each other's right now. you're attacking, so read from here. And then, why can't the baker get a second date? Because when women ask about his job, he says, I need the dough. I, <laughs> I, need, I need it to build it up. It's only 10 seconds. Okay, you're attacking. The, the difference between an oral thermometer and a rectal thermometer is the taste. Point for Gary on the scoreboard. Uh, so my grandfather has the heart of a lion, and he also has a lifetime ban from the zoo. <laughs> a guy shows up late for work, his boss yells, you should have been here at 8.30. The guy replies, why? What happened at 8.30? <laughs> that shit goes, that shit, he's dead inside. <laughs> Why can't pirates remember the alphabet? They get lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> what, did the older, what did the older flower say to the younger flower? You're really growing there, bud. <laughs> I give you one. <laughs> he gave you one. Oh, look at the scorecard. Gary, yeah, you one. 
These are all of these. <laughs> Gary's jokes. Gary knows how to tell a joke that anybody can tell. <laughs> <laughs>